I don't review stuff very often, um, but I do get offered by a lot of companies different products that they have that they want to show on my videos. A lot of stuff's just not suitable, and I don't want really to put up stuff that just my audience mightn't really like. So, and also I have to kind of like the product myself. I like products that are simple, um, yet handy, make life a little bit easier on the farm. So, none better than the new product that we've just took delivery of. So, the tipsy bin is a meal bin. Um, it can hold 700 kilos. It's from a company called Megafab, who have the warehouse in Galway. Um, it's a family run business. It's a new business, but the guy who invented this is called Michael. Lovely man, met him last night. Had a, well, didn't get to have much of a chat with him because he came during making time. But I was speaking on the phone a few times and I was looking up his stuff on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description right below here where you can actually look at a YouTube video of this in full operation. Um, if I don't cover enough of it here on this one. We're using barrels at the minute. I had them actually loaded uh, the past two days ready to go to the co-op and get our, our meal. But then this came, so I'm going to put this on as well with the barrels and we're going to fill it as well. But what's different about this compared to any other meal bin you might look at? Well, it has a real good advantage. So the first thing we do is we look at the lid of it and you have the handle here. Now the handle has a bend in it and it is weighted. So when you put the handle into the lid, you put it in, flick it the whole way through and then it cannot lift. No wind, nothing can shake it out. And you're not all the time putting in clips and pushing a pin through or anything that is awkward. This is just simple and straightforward and it works. Take the lid off. Any use that have meal bins like this, um, from loads of different brands, what's the one thing that annoys you the most about it? Now, there's probably a few things, but I have used them on different farms, and there has been one thing that has stood out more than anything. And that is, when you get to the last bit of meal in your bin, you have to reach down, you can't get that last bit of meal out. Well, you can, but you have to nearly get into the bin to get it out. And when you're at that all the time, the one thing that's really gonna upset is your back. Now. I suffer with my back quite badly, but a bad back is something that a lot of farmers deal with. And a lot of it's down to just improper work, carrying things is too heavy, we all do it. I still do it. It's just something we're all guilty of. But this little invention is here to kind of help that. It'll hold 700 kilos of nut for male. You have your two grooves that are sitting out here and two on the outside. The two grooves that are sitting in the middle are for your forklift to go in and pick this up and drop it wherever you like. The two outer grooves on both sides are for a bale lifter. So your bale lifter that lifts your wrap bale can come in on either side, pick it up. Air Flemings here pick, has picked it up, carried it no problem. You can squeeze in around it and it's very, very simple. But the grooves are good and deep. Uh, they're not curved, they're just a nice, good, deep groove. So well, if you keep it below 60 kilometers an hour, I don't think it's going to fall off. Having that bale lifter option is great because not everybody has a forklift or pallet fox to fit onto the loader. A lot of people who has a front loader will have a bale stacker and a lot of people will have bale lifters for the back of the tractors too. So we're getting now to the main feature. If you see the grooves here, but you notice it's flat here on this side. Well, this is where it's different than any other bin. You can see here it's chamfered along the bottom. We go around this side and have a look at it from here. So you can see the way it's sloped up towards the front. So what you're supposed to do is you start using your meal from the upper side, away from the flat side, from the upper side. And as you use your meal from this end, the bin starts to get lighter on this side. And gradually itself, through its own gravity and the way it's built, will start to tilt forward. Like that. And as you keep using your meal, that bin will eventually sit completely on its own at a tilt the whole time. And you have no problem accessing the meal at the bottom. Now I'm a tall person, I'm six foot one, and any bin I have used, I all have struggled to get to the bottom of it. Um, it's just something everybody has that problem with. What the majority of people is what happen, they won't fully use what's left in the bottom of it. They come along then, just refill it. And you'll always get old male building and building on the bottom. And that's just something that happens on farms. And that's something I would probably do myself. When it's tilted like this, no problem at all. And that's the flat of my hand on the floor. Never gonna be an issue, there's no reaching down to get at that. There's a hole here, um, which means you can tilt, you can wash out the bin and tilt the entire bin over and it will drain out through that hole very quickly. It's really good, it's really strong. I can't see how it could fail. As I said before, I like it because it's simple. So now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna load it up here onto the bay lifter, lift it up, drop it onto the trailer, and we're going to the co-op and we're going to fill it with meal.
So before we go any further, I just want to show you now that it's on the bale stacker, how it fits in. You can see it just sits lovely underneath. There's a great groove there, it's caught in nicely, it can't slip off. I don't even have it the whole way in, but it sits lovely and neatly. It's really, really solid. There's definitely going to be no issue there lifting it off. It actually works really well with the bale stacker. When I was at the local co-op, I had people come up to me and were looking at it. And once I tilted it, they all went, hmm. That's interesting. You have to forgive me. I have had root canal surgery done this morning. So my T's and my S's are just a little bit hard to pronounce, but, but hopefully you'll be fit to understand me. What do you think? Well, I like it. I like it for simplicity. Simplicity. <laughs>
um, just to free them up. Another great thing to use in your rollers, believe it or not, is white spray grease. I don't even know what brand that is. It's just a multi-purpose grease, brilliant for rollers. You can spray it right into the rollers and it keeps all the moisture out. A lot of people will use it for chains and bicycles and things, but I've bought this can specifically for rollers and doors and I've used it. I've had that, I've had that can about three, three years now. A couple of little squirts every year on the rollers and as soon as you put it on, you will see a huge difference. Just a little tip that might interest you. So we're finally getting around to it. Probably what a lot of you want to see is the case doing her force feed from the pit. Now, I won't lie to you, she has been used already. And so far, so good. The only thing I would say is, a lot of people ask me, God, you're gonna find so such a difference with the loader. Feeding wise, yeah, it's handy. There was nothing wrong with the shear grab on the back of the tractor. People were always commenting when I used the feeder. You'll see it back in other videos. Um, I'll put a link in the description of last year's feed with the shear grab on the back of the Massey, for instance. And if you want to go into the description, you can watch that video. But I didn't find anything wrong with the shear grab on the back. There's nothing wrong with that system. Um, you're, you have more visibility with the shear grab um, on the back of the tractor than you have with the loader because I'd be always weary of cows catching their head. It's not so much you're closing or opening it on the cow's head. That's not what the problem is. The problem is, is when you have an eager cow who will put her head underneath when you're opening it and then she just pull it back and get herself badly injured. Hasn't really ever happened on the farm. It's a miracle that it hasn't be happened because it happens on a lot of farms. Visibility is definitely not as good. Definitely not as good. So that's a minus. But otherwise good. We're going to get into a feed now very shortly. I'm going to show you exactly how it is working. The weight on the back, it sits lovely on the back of the case. It's covered in dirt at the moment because I was standing on it as I was putting up the two new LED lights that we got from Auto Sparky. You'll see these lights in action over the next few videos. They look very close to the originals. They don't stand out. They just look really well and the light difference is just no comparisons. So the weight came to us supplied by uh, Lakeland Machinery in Castle Blaney. Evan Dunn sent me out three different weights to try. You might have seen the one that looked like a Frisian cow. It wasn't heavy enough. It was, only five, it was only 480 kilos, I think. And the one we had before that again was a good weight. I think it was 500 kgs or a little more, but it, one that was one that lifted just on the arms and it just didn't lift enough off the ground. This one clears the ground lovely. Um, it's really well constructed. It's a great weight. I like the look of it. Um, steel, all steel. Whole frame of that is completely steel, all welded joints, and inside it's full of concrete. Um, so you're not going to worry about chipping it or anything like that because you've got your steel. Here you've got an anchor for pulling, and then you've got your linkage. On this you can swap them out to suit different arms and different tractors, which is another great plus to it. I've been using it quite a while already, and it's easy to go off, easy to put on, and it's just a perfect balance for that shear grab. Lots of people like myself thought the shear grab wouldn't work on the front of the case. There's no problem. Once you get the weight right on the back, how I know is I look at my front tires to see how much weight is on them and she handles this much easier than she handled the bales. Not a problem to her. She just sails to it. She's not going to have any issues. Keep the front axle well greased and I'm really, really happy that she's not under any extra pressure. The tires in this tractor are, let's just say they're done. There's no way of putting it, they are done. The front tire on this side is gone, but the front tire on the other side looks to be 90%, but it's perished. As you can see, if you look closely, there is a lot of perish on these tires. So I'm not expecting them to last a whole pile longer. The ones in the back are good year. Again, you can see that. Very perish, so any weight on them now, especially with the front loader, I wouldn't be surprised if we get the odd punch or the odd maybe blowout, unfortunately. But So I have been looking for new tires. Um, I have been talking to different companies about different brands, been doing my research on them and what I'm hoping to do is probably update the tires completely. Is obviously put four new brand new tires on at the one time and going to widen the tires. We're going to put a wider tire on the back, definitely, and a wider tire on the front. Maybe we would even go for solid rims in the front as well. So we're going to get working on that fairly soon, hopefully. I am trying to get prices together and seeing what we can afford to put on um, as well. So um, we're just going to look into that. But in the future, in the near future, we should be getting new tires on our case. Right. Let's feed.
fed. What did you think? Well, I'm happy. I think she's a great little yard tractor. She's running exceptionally well. She's doing her job exceptionally well. Now, people that's gonna say, God, she's very slow. Oh, she's so slow, I couldn't stick that. It doesn't bother me. It's not slow. It's not a broadband advertisement. So I couldn't care less uh, if it's slower than a lot of the more modern tractors, because it's not a modern tractor. And yes, the, we did change the back end filter. I know a lot of people mentioned that. That is a good idea to do. But we did do that and everything's fine there. We do maintain it fairly well. I actually prefer like that. I have used loaders that are very, very fast. I wouldn't want a loader like that around here because you can see the blade comes in very close contact with cow's heads. And you don't want something that's going to be flying up and down. You want something that's nice and steady. So it suits me. Now it has its disadvantages. As I said before, visibility is poor. So I have to be really, really extra careful. If I wasn't filming this today, I would have put that silage in with my lights on. Um, the LED lights just are phenomenal. They light up the whole shed. No doubt down the line, you're gonna see them on the whole time, but they light up the whole place and the more light you have, because that is a dark shed and that's why I put the lights on the daytime. The skylights could probably do it being changed um, because they have yellowed over pretty badly. So them lights are a blessing. A lot of you might ask why I'm not lifting extra big blocks or full blocks out of it. Quite right, I wasn't. I was some, but certainly not them all. Um, reason for that is I'm trying to get a nice face on the end of the pit. I'm trying to clean the pit up as best I can. Um, it's still very loose because we're just after getting to the full height of it there now. So we are about two weeks using this pit, um, but I'm still disappointed. There is waste along the top, but we're getting out of it now. It's starting to disappear. But along there, yeah, I had to take another grab off the top of that pit before I put in that silage of waste. So shouldn't be there. The silage is down underneath. That silage is brilliant. That's some of the nicest silage we have ever had. Um, and I knew that because I knew from the first cut from looking at it, I said, this stuff is great. And I actually can't see the line between the first cut and the second cut. So yeah, face of it still needs to be cleaned up. That sheer head never was the cleanest. I had a, a red rock before, which kept the front of the pit an awful lot cleaner. Um, I don't know why. And it also has a little bit of trouble of lifting it. The bits as tight on the floor. That's why you see me come out with the grape and clean it up. It takes a few minutes, but if it rained on it and you left it there and it rained on it, the cattle wouldn't eat it and you'd find you'd have a lot of waste. So grip it in, done. So that's it for today's video. If you haven't already and you like our videos, hit that sub button, give us a like, comment at will down below, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. And my final few words for the day on the case with its loader and the shear head fitted. Could I live without it? Yes. Would I want to? No. Take care.